Guys, so let's take a look at unemployment and how unemployment is measured in an economy. Okay, so as a simple definition, we can see that unemployment is uh, really just about those of working age actively seeking employment opportunities. When it comes to measuring unemployment though, that this can be a difficult process and the reason for that is because of the imperfect information that the government possesses. The information will not be 100% accurate. To take a rather extreme example, perhaps um, we could consider someone who is actively uh, working but is still at the same time claiming unemployment benefits. Now, if they're working cash in hand and they're working in the shadow economy, then uh, of course it's very difficult to actually track down that information. Uh, okay, so in those sorts of circumstances, the figures can be skewed and distorted, uh, suggesting unemployment is higher than it is. Uh, so it's it's an imperfect scenario, but nevertheless, it's the best we've got. So let's look at the two clear measures we've got to look at in terms of understanding this. You need to be aware of the distinctions between these two measures. Firstly, the claimant count. Well, this is simply the number of people registered, um, seeking work and claiming unemployment benefits. Okay, so that's, a, again, a nice straightforward definition to understand. Okay, but further to this, we also have the International Labour Organization measure of unemployment. Now, this is the actual figure that you will see when it comes to any new stories about unemployment. Okay, we use this measure as do all other EU countries. Okay, um, the reasons for this are really because our first measure here, the claimant count, can be manipulated politically to make it look uh, better uh, than it actually is. So examples could be that you could make it harder for people to actually register for unemployment benefits. Uh, by doing so, you'd help to reduce the claimant count, of course. So therefore, the ILO uh, measure is far, far more appropriate and far more accurate in determining uh, what is actually taking place within an economy's employment scenario. Okay, uh, so we can see they conduct a uh, quarterly labour force survey undertaken by the International Labour Organisation. Uh, to be considered unemployed on this measure, you must be out of work for uh, four weeks. You must, further to this, be ready and available to work uh, within very short uh, short turnaround period and finally you must also be actively seeking work so this is a, a stricter definition now what you can also see is that there are a number of distinctions here between our claimant count which is simply about unemployment benefits and whether you're actually receiving those and those people who are actually uh, interested in finding a job and actually pursuing that job very quickly. For some people, those that have uh, high savings, um, well, they wouldn't actually qualify for any unemployment benefits. So why, therefore, would you actually bother signing on? Um, so as a result of that sort of scenario, it means that the ILO measure will be higher in most circumstances than the claimant count will be. OK, um, so let's just uh, consider this for the UK uh, and consider the way in which you need to be able to interpret figures on unemployment. So in January 2018, we can see the, the figures here on the ILO definition, 4.3% um, of people unemployed. So that is simply taking those out of work, uh, actively seeking uh, employment and ready and available to work. Uh, divided by the entire working population there uh, came out at 4.3%. That amounts to 1.45 million people Okay, within the UK. So this is a very low level of uh, unemployment. Okay, And it does suggest that the uh, UK economy is getting a number of things right in terms of reducing uh, unemployment and perhaps helping to improve the distribution of income. OK, in our next lesson, we'll be looking at the different types of unemployment. And this is really significant for you. 
Okay, thanks guys.